two ways of insight. Ah, you found yourself a hunter. Hello. So this is a tutorial that I am making for a couple of my friends that wanted me to make this about Bloodborne. So here we are in the very beginning area and we're just going to run past this wolf. Hey bitch. Suck my ass. Oh shit, he actually chased me. Looks like he's not gonna chase me anymore. Oh yeah. So we're just gonna run by. Tell this guy to fuck off. Hey, hey yo man. Stop swinging that axe. I need you to get away from the ladder, please. Ow. Motherfucker. Hearing the cleric beast in a second, but yes, come over here, light your lamp, and we shall go to the dream. Okay, so we're in the dream now, and this is where you will be teleporting. Now, if you're like my friend AJ, you won't have read any of these things which tell you how to play the game. All these little messages on the ground, left by the developers themselves. So that is, yeah, those are there, AJ. So here, we're going to pick up our starter weapons. Uh, I'll go with Hunter's Axe, actually. And pistol. And notebook. Notebooks can be equipped or just straight up used. Um, it allows you to leave notes for your friends or other hunters. And they can, if you see there's a trap or something, an item that might be valuable, you can go ahead and leave a note for them. And it will be seen by other hunters. Um, not much to do in here. Um, this will be storage where later on you can deposit stuff and uh, withdraw. And this is where you will be fortifying your weapons, repairing them, and later on doing blood gem fortification. And this will be where you go to equip runes. However, you will not get the item for equipping runes till about a third way through the game. So here we have the doll. Um, without any insight, as you can see in the top right corner, um, that little eye icon that tells us we have zero insight. And without any insight, we cannot actually level up right now. So all echoes we have are currently only usable in this bath messenger which we can buy blood vials bullets and other wonderful things as you progress through the game more things will be unlocked but right now since it is the very beginning we only have the most basic of stuff so to equip weapons press your options button and it'll pull up this little menu the first two boxes will be your right hand weapons 
and the other two boxes will be your left hand weapons it can be multiple weapons such as like a hunter's axe and then a saw cleaver it could be a pistol and a flamethrower or a pistol and a torch it doesn't really matter um, whatever you want to use you can also swap out your armor by clicking on it and just swapping it out once you get more later on and then you have your quick items which you can equip um, molotovs boom uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Pebbles, um, throwing knives, uh, lots of good stuff. You can even equip some other healing items which are not blood vials later on in the game as well. So now we're going to teleport back. This is the hub for teleporting throughout the main game. This will be Central Yarnum. I don't remember what this one is. But yes, as you progress, um, this will give you new places to teleport to so this will take us back to Yosefka's clinic and this will take us back to the uh, that lantern that was at the top of the uh, the ladder So now we are back here in the clinic where we started off with a lamp. And we're going to go talk to an NPC real quick. And I'm not going to bother you with actually like listening to all the dialogue. But basically she gives us a blood vial. No. So we can equip this blood vial by opening up our menu, go to quick items, and pow. And to use that item, we will press square. Currently, I only have one usable item. Actually, wait. I have Hunter's Mark and Notebook. So, to go through your quick items, you will press down on the D-pad. So, right now, I have two things equipped, the Notebook and the Blood Vial. And so, that is how I can quickly scroll um, through my quick items. Um, it's very helpful for having certain buffs for your weapons and then having a type of arcane weapon or something but we're going to go through just a quick move sets of your attacks so R1 basically your quick attack it's very weak well not very weak it's just it's the weaker of your attacks R2 is going to be a stronger attack it will take longer to um, actually go through and consumes a lot more stamina and then you can charge up your R2 attack like so so R2 slams charge up and R1 um, to shoot your pistol you press L2 I'm not going to do that right now and then to transform your weapon it is L1 and very similar weaker attacks are R1 stronger attacks are R2 and you can also charge them up although some weapons do not have a charge up on their second form but I do believe all weapons have a charge attack on their first form so let's go through some combos real quick. You can transform your weapon mid-combo. So you swing, press L1, and you'll do a quick little transform attack. Likewise, if you're transformed, you can swing, press L1, and you'll do a transform attack back into your original form. You can technically keep pressing L1 as many times as you want as long as you have enough stamina. So swing, L1, 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 and I just transformed my weapon and did a combo so that's how that works R1 R2 L1 for transform transform back and pistol shot is L2 so let's go kill this wolf and now we have blood vials 
to use a blood vial. Well, actually, no. Let's uh, talk a little bit more about weapons real quick. To switch between your right hand weapons, you will press right on the D-pad. Now, currently, I do not have another weapon equipped, so it's just my fist. And to switch between your left hand weapons, it is left on the D-pad. And likewise, I don't have a secondary yet, so right now I will just punch with my fist. Back to my pistol. To um, quickly give yourself five additional bullets, as you can see in the top left corner, I have ten Quicksilver bullets. If I wanted more, I could press up on the D-pad. This will give me five... Um, I like to call them blood bullets, but they're just regular bullets in truth. Um, you can only have five of them at a time. So, I mean, it's best if you want to conserve your bullet usage, use the, uh, the blood bullets, exhaust all five of them, and then go back and make five more. And so, yes. One of my favorite things is to make blood bolts and then immediately heal and then pull another blood vial out of my little um, storage area. So now we're going to go into the, the concepts of pairing. Basically when you see someone about to attack, you do that. You shoot them at the proper moment. It will stagger them and you do a heavy attack on them. Oh. I'm actually not used to the Hunter X. So, yes. Now, let's go through the rest of the controls real quick. So, we've gone through Square. Square will use whatever is in your quick inventory. So, if I want to use my notebook, I can write a note by pressing Square. If I wanted to use that, uh, Yosefka's blood vial, I'd press square, but currently I do not. And then, circle is for sprinting. It is also used for rolling if you tap it. And it will also be used for quick stepping later on when you are locked onto a target. And we will talk about locking on in a moment. Also, if you want the flamethrower, talk to this guy. I'm not going to talk to him, but yes, you talk to him. And once you have beat this entire area, come back to and talk to him again. He'll give you the flamethrower. So here we have pebbles. I'm going to remove the notebook because I'm not going to use it. And swap over to pebbles by using down on the D-pad. To lock on, you press R3. And that will lock on and turn your circles into quick steps. So it'll make you, it'll just help you, um, like track your enemy more. And yes, that is that. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all the different combos of your weapon because that is for you to discover as you play this fantastic game. But this first area can be quite daunting and I will kind of just try and help you get through it. So there's these little mobs, lock on to one, throw a pebble at it. And he'll be like, hey dude, what the fuck? And then you'll miss all your fucking attacks. Actually scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I didn't know he was fucking coming back for me. But yes. Use pebbles and lure them out to you. There is an asshole back here. Don't fight him. He's he's not worth the trouble. He's not guarding anything. And he'll probably just kill you multiple times and make you hate your life. Always check every little alley, every little cranny. Look for items. Sometimes they will be hidden by little crates. 
Um, most of the time they are visible. You just have to destroy them by rolling into them or destroying them manually. So there's this little bastard here, taking a nap. Um, men with guns will always drop bullets, so if you need bullets, go ahead and farm them. Yes. And always take the high ground, because these little bastards down here will want your dick. Okay. Always. And so now these little assholes will come over here. And yes, just clear them out. Small group at a time. If you get like three of them out on you, it will get a little bit hairy. And if you get more than three, you're probably dead. So there are a couple snipers down there. We do not want to attack them. Now these patrols here, you might not have noticed them, but they're actually going down the street and will return back. So if you go down these stairs over here to my right, which you can't see, and start trying to dwindle their numbers down, these guys will actually come up and beat the shit out of you. So let's lure one of them with a pebble, or not. Jesus, I don't like the Hunter X. But yes, make sure you dwindle out all these bastards because they can fuck you up. might be a couple more down there, but um, I think we've cleared out the majority of the bastards. Now, to gain insight, because that is absolutely necessary for regressing through this game, you'll need to collect an item called Madman's Knowledge. And I know where some is, I just don't actually want to go get it, because it's actually a pseudo bitch so get. And don't, don't be shy to heal. If you need a heal, fucking heal. If you... Ah, oh, shit. I thought he was gonna die. Let's go kill that sniper. I'll try and find at least a little bit of insight. killed itself. Dumbass bitch. And so I will actually show you the pretty straightforward shortcuts 
to getting certain places in the very beginning. I'm not going to actually do the bosses and I'm not going to explore every area because that is part of playing the game. But I will show you how to unlock some areas which will make your playing this game a little bit easier, especially in the beginning stages. So as you saw there, there's an item there, obscured um, because of those crates. So yes, always be mindful of what might be hidden by some items. So over here, we're going to get the hunter torch. Hi, butch. Come at me. Come at me, bro. Come on. And so here we have the Hunter Torch, which is a perfect example of a second left-hand weapon. So if I'm in a dark area and I need to see shit, what a fire. Oh, we have Molotov cocktails as well. Nice. I'm actually going to move them over one slot because we will be equipping an item called oil urns later on, which increase fire damage. And we want that. There is also these blasted curves. Yeah, we'll get this item real quick. Oil urns. I didn't realize they're right there. It's been a while. So now, if we wanted to go oil urn, you just lock onto someone, throw it at them. Quickly swap over to Molotov, throw over the fire at them, and it will do extra damage. Now, I'm going to go pick up the first hunter gear set with you. And we're getting these cold blood dews. To look at the stuff in your inventory, just obviously you go to options, click inventory, and you can see everything you have in here. I'll explain some of these other items like cold blood dew and the Mad Men's Dodge later on once I get some. Magnificent. Magnificent. I love how I threw a Molotov cocktail like clear the fuck out of dodge. Mm. Now, as you can see, you can only hold 20 blood vials and 20 bullets max. Unless you have certain runes equipped, which will increase the amount you can hold at one time. All these items, like bullets, Molotov cocktails, they all these items I'm collecting will now go back into your storage. And blood vials and bullets will automatically refill. So if you die, you'll get them back immediately. Well, not a, you'll not get them back, but it'll auto resupply. Uh, Molotov cocktails, pebbles, and other things, you actually have to manually go back to the hunter's dream and withdraw yourself. So yes, yeah, something to just be aware of. So as we approach the area where we can get our better hunter armor, there will be these two werewolves here. Don't attack them. They're very strong. And I will actually show you a pretty cheap way of killing them because they have like 800 health and both of them at one time is actually quite terrifying. So just kind of run by. Those are the stairs we just came up just in case uh, you forgot. And we're going to go down these stairs now. This will be where we get our regular hunter's attire. And something about Bloodborne is all the areas are very, well most of it, like most areas are interconnected so like this is the road that we were just on this is yeah where we just ran and got all that um all those enemies so destroy these crates get this item and destroy these crates again destroy these coffins and it will reveal a ladder 
So we're going to go down this ladder. To quickly go down ladders, just hold circle and hold down on the left joystick. And you'll slide down them. So you don't have to climb down them on that really slow rate. Okay. So here we are. Now these these um these opponents are a little bit stronger. So we have to uh not fuck up. As you can see they have a lot more health than your typical Yarnamite. So as I'm at max blood vials, I'm going to go ahead, pop a blood vial, get myself some blood bullets, and then continue. There is nothing of value down in this area of the sewers. I've checked multiple times, just these rats. So unless you want the blood echoes, there's no real reason to actually kill them. So we're going to drop down on this ledge here. I don't remember what this item is, so... It's thick cold blood, and I'll talk about them later. Okay. Could have sworn something. Okay, so there is an enemy around this corner, and he's quite formidable, so be prepared. You'll need to parry him. And I fucked up. He hit me. And by the time I would have gotten close to him, he would have already uh, been ready with another attack. And this will be where you get your regular hunter garb. So we're going to swap to that right now. Oh, just to uh, clarify, to switch between the different parts of your body, like your head, body, or torso, arms or hands and legs um, click on it and then press R2 and you'll quickly scroll between the different parts of your uh, your kit and the same goes with weapons I believe yeah and the same goes with the quick items so if you want to equip something on number one bam you want something on number two three four five etc so now we are better equipped for fighting we are gonna drop down here but we will also well I'm not going to personally do it but you will want to come back and explore this area in depth later on so we have these uh, corpses down here they're guarding quicksilver bullets so I mean unless you really want five quicksilver bullets um, just don't pick it up because they all attack you uh, fuck. You're supposed to fall on those beams, you know, like a, a smart person, but <laughs> you said I'm smart. So we're going to run down this area. There are going to be crows and these ghoulish type cre critters down here. We're just going to run past them all and climb up this ladder. And this will be a shortcut that will be unlocked for getting to a boss later on. So do not go across that bridge. That's where the boss will be. We will unlock this elevator. And once this elevator reaches the top, it can be used from both the bottom and the top. Now typically, you would find this elevator from this direction. The elevator would be on the lower level. You go to click on this, and it would say device is currently not operable because you hadn't activated it yet. So now we can. If like, now we can actually use it when it's down there. And yeah, that's that. Now here we got these uh, lovely ogre brutes. Hey you guys. Come at me. Oh, fuck you. Oh, 
Oh shit. No, 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 no. Uh uh. Okay, good. Some enemies are tethered. You can abuse that. Oh! What the hell? Apparently, I decided to start sucking dick at this game. So, let's actually try and kill this guy. Hey, fat ass. There we go. Okay. So, now that we have the elevator activated, it's time to go unlock the other shortcut, which is this way. Open these doors. If you have the hunter uh, torch equipped, go ahead and use it. There'll be this bastard in the dark. Kill it with fire. Open this door. There'll be an enemy up here. And then open up this gate. Earlier in the area, I mean, earlier we were on the other side, we cannot open the gate from that direction. But now we can open it up from this way. So voila. And we are back to this area once more. Okay, so now to how to gather the first insight. Now that we have this shortcut, we are going to go find our first madman's knowledge. Um... And there's actually another shortcut I need to unlock. I forgot all about that. And there's Madman Knowledge there as well. But we're going to go this way. Oh, uh, yes. There's an old man here with a gun. Kill him. He'll always drop bullets. So if you need a farm, go ahead. Farm away. So we're going to go back the way we came, but we're not going to go exactly the way. Always check all avenues. There might be some items. Be kleptomaniacs. Over here we got some dogs and some cages. Kill them quickly. Because some of them break out. I don't know which ones do. That one does. And they're basically just free, um, free echoes. And I'll explain what cold blood do is. Come back and talk to this lady once you reach the Cathedral Ward. Now there are some secret passages, like this one. And be very careful otherwise you might fall. And then just carry on this way. And talk to this hunter here. I'm not gonna bore you with the dialogue, you can read that yourself. If you do not talk to her here, she will become an enemy of yours later on. And it's actually it's actually kind of important not to have her become an enemy because the enemy that you fight drops a very important rune, which is the second strongest visceral attack rune in the game. So just make sure you do that. Okay, so now after we've talked to the hunter lady, You'll notice there, uh, there are some items that are attached to these corpses, but we can't actually pick them up. And I'm not going to pick them up. But I'm going to show you how to release them. Be careful where you stand, otherwise you might fall. And that kind of makes things shitty. 
So just swing. The item will fall down there into the sewer. And you'll actually have to climb up and down a ladder to go to both sides of it because they are not connected. You can't get from one side of the sewer to the other. So you have to climb up a ladder, drop down, climb up a ladder, drop down on the other side to get them. One of these is a saw spear, which is very similar to the saw cleaver, which is one of the beginning weapons. And then the other one is like bloodstone shards or something. So now, now that we've looted everything vital up here, it's time to actually go get that, that knowledge, that madman's knowledge. Shit, I thought he was here. Um, okay. I think the cooler one is on this side, so we're gonna drop down on that side, but we're gonna kill this bastard. Because reasons. A charged attack in the rear of almost all the enemies will result in a, a, a stagger. There are some enemies that don't do that for some reason, but they are very rare. And it's still advantageous to do it, so always do it. If you can sneak up on them. So we're going to drop down on this side. Now there are rats down here. So be mindful of that. They're not that hard to kill. Just, you know, don't be stupid. Or dumb. Okay. Rats drop throwing knives and other stupid stuff. Um, so, oh yes, we looted our saw spear. So now we have our second melee weapon. And I'm actually going to switch to that because I'm more comfortable with it. It's a lot quicker. Uh, more suited to me. Now, obviously, we can't get over there. So there's a ladder out that direction. You can climb up and drop down again. Get it. Watch out for rats. So over here, there are two rats and this, this like little uh, ending. We're gonna kill them. And pick up Madman's knowledge. So remember how the doll was inanimate when we were in the dream before? Once we return, well actually I wanna destroy this before returning. But we're all gonna go unlock another thing. Now here's that ladder I was talking about. Climb up that. Be careful, there are enemies up there which are very nasty. So yes, be, just be mindful. As I said, this is more of a, just a quick tutorial guide on the beginning area and I'm not gonna play through the actual area. So this is a different ladder than the other one. Remember, we were here earlier. There are those quicksilver bullets, and we dropped down from that part of the sewer. And we ran down the other way, which unlocked that shortcut. We're going to unlock one more shortcut. And I believe there's another Madman's Lodge here. There's a lot of crows defending it, though. Of course, I can't lock on a fucking closest crow to me, now can I? Crows drop pebbles sometimes, so it, they'll just replenish your during. So yes, we have two Madman Solid now, which will basically give us two insight. And then there's this bitch. Go ahead and just get a nice crisp parry on him, or stagger. 
One thing I need to tell you about the visceral attacks, you have to be incredibly careful on your distance when you stagger them with either your pistol or other means. Um, you have to be pretty much right next to them. If you're not right next to them, you'll just do a quick auto attack. And once you hit them with an auto attack, most regular enemies are no longer susceptible to a parry or a, the visceral attack. Some bosses you can get a couple R1s in and then visceral them, but it's it's better just to always go for the initial visceral attack. So this is the area that we were at earlier before getting our hunter gear. So as you can see, we came up from that direction, went up here, killed these dogs and the hunters, or not hunters, but huntsmen. And here is an important little, important little quest. But, um, find girl's mother. I'm not gonna read dialogue. You'll use that for the Father Gascoigne fight, because Father Gascoigne is her father. Um, basically, you'll just equip the tiny music box. And whenever you play it with Square... When you're fighting him, it will give you a couple seconds to um, uh, get some hits because it reminds him of his daughter and his wife. So yes, I'm now going to use a Bold Hunter's Mark and return back to a lantern. Okay, so before returning back to the dream... We want to consume some of the, at least one, of the Madman's Knowledge. You can consume multiples. Um, currently in this part of the game, there are no enemies that can sap you of your insight. The only way to lose your insight is by spending it or summoning players to your world. So we're going to consume one because if we consume one of these Madman's in, uh, Knowledge... Uh, when we're in the dream, the doll will still be inanimate. We'll have to leave the dream, return back, and then she would be animate. So yes, the doll is now active. We can talk to her, and we can now level up. And uh, yes... Okay. Consume insight and ring the beckoning bell to enlist cooperation of hunters from other worlds. So we get beckoning bell and the uh, sciencing blank and the old hunter bell. The old hunter bell will allow you to summon NPC hunters. Um, typically their their little bells will be around um, near boss fights. You can ring on them. They'll, they'll come. It'll charge you one insight. Now, something I like to do well, actually, let's before we talk about that, let's let's talk about weapons. I said you could fortify weapons earlier, and we have been collecting bloodstone shards. Bloodstone shards increase your weapon the first three levels or tiers. It'll be like plus one, plus I mean plus two, plus one, plus three, whatever. Um, and then they're no longer usable. You need a better you need a better web, um, source to increase your weapon's efficiency. So, here we have bloodstone shards. Later on, you'll start collecting twin bloodstone shards. And then after that, you'll start collecting bloodstone chunks. And then one blood rock, I think it's called. And then your weapon will be fully um, maxed. So, whenever you come here, always look to see if you can fortify a weapon. Because... If you fortify a weapon, it'll automatically repair it for you. You don't need to spend blood echoes on repairing weapons if you spend, spend them on fortification now, being fortified. If you can't fortify them, go ahead and just repair. So we're going to fortify this. And now, as you can see in the top right corner, it says bloodstone shards required for upgrading my soul spear is five. Currently, I only have three. So I could upset the, I mean, I could upgrade the hunter's axe. But I don't want to because I prefer Soul Spear. You can upgrade your pistol as well, but that isn't recommended unless you're doing a Blood Tinge build. And then repair weapons. We can repair the Hunter's Axe. We'll go ahead and do it. 
Talk to Garman if you want. And then we're gonna go talk to the doll. Hello, I am an twin. Fascinating. So channel blood echoes. Very well. Um, vitality, health, endurance, your stamina. It will like it will also increase your physical defense, your resistance to poisons and other things. Strength will increase weapons that scale off of strength, obviously. Skill, same thing as strength. Uh, skill weapons will scale off skill. Blood tinge, you know. Arcane, arcane is kind of funky. I'm not going to actually discuss what it is. You'll have to figure that out on your own. But yes, this is how you level up stats. This is where you buy things, as usual. Although, I forgot to pick something up, which would have made for a nice little, uh, whatever. And then here's the insight bath. You can buy stuff with insight, but just remember, insight has to be obtained from bosses by discovering them and killing them, and then by collecting madman's knowledge. And yes, that is pretty much it. I'm going to do one last thing. I'm just trying to think of the easiest way to do it. Okay, this is going to be the easiest way to do it. Okay, we are back. And every time you die or reload an area, all the enemies return. So you can either farm them for stuff, or you can just run past them as I'm doing now. The enemy I'm looking for has a badge. And what badges do is they unlock what you can purchase at the regular messenger bath. Which will either be certain items, um, uh, like a monocular, I believe it is. Not monocular, the, uh, the hand lantern and some other goodies. So here's that bridge we discovered earlier. We're going to run about halfway through it. And then book it because we're about to go Indiana Jones style here. Okay, so now that we avoided fiery ball of death, we can come across this bridge with uh, very little fear. You bitch! You fucking whore! Oh my god. Yeah, I can still get my ass kicked. Uh, getting my blood vials back. Okay, so we're going to acquire one last pseudo um, important thing in this level. And that is the Sword Hunter badge. Which will give us access to certain hunter weapons and other stuff. So you come down that ladder and you want to walk very slowly. Because there's a big ass pig here. Lock on and give this pig a night to remember. Like I said, whenever you do a visceral attack, kind of run forward and then do your R1. So over here we have the Sword Hunter badge, or Saw Hunter badge, sorry. Um, and that will give us access to all those weapons that we could have used at the beginning of the game. Remember you chose your, uh, your um, Hunter Axe or your Saw Cleaver or the Threaded Cane. So that will give us access to those things. As you progress through the games you'll collect more badges. They're not consumable so it's just something you collect and forever, for the rest of the game, you can use them. Let's 
so yes. This concludes the tutorial. Okay, I lied. There is one last thing I wanted to talk about. So, as you can see in the top uh, right hand corner, I have 5,000 echoes. So, Welcome typically you'd want to come to the doll, talk to her, channel as many uh, stats as you can. We'll do one in health, one in endurance, one in skill, or as many as it will let me. Confirm. Level up. And then... Yes. So, we're going to talk to her again. Very well. Let me. And we can see there we uh, need 1,660 echoes. So, we currently only have 122. Well, good hunter. So, if you want to level up and you're close to it, go ahead and see if you have any of these particular items in your inventory. Cold blood is basically echoes. You use them you gain echoes. Now, the reason you don't want to use echoes out in-game when you're out amongst the Yarnamites is because if you die, you lose them, and so might as well keep them in a form that are not, you know, they're safer. So we're going to use as many as we can, see if we can get up to 1660. So 1500, just one more, and we should be fine to level up one more stat. Welcome, Woody. Very well. And yes. So now Farewell. we have um, leveled up. Talked about your inventories, and different stuffs. All these things have different uses. So yes, good luck um, exploring the world of Bloodborne. <laughs>